We're at the Texas Monument at the Manassas National Battlefield on the anniversary of the Battle of the Second Manassas, or Second Bull Run, to introduce Episode 5 of Hood's Texas Brigade, presented by the Texas Division of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. This episode will follow the Texas Brigade from its victory at Gaines Mill through the fighting here at Second Manassas, where the Brigade once again played a pivotal role. Hi, I'm Johnny Anderson, producer at the Civil War Studios and member of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. I hope you enjoy this episode, and if you do, be sure and remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Second Manassas, or Second Bull Run, was fought a little less than a year after the Battle of First Manassas, or First Bull Run. Texas soldiers commented that they saw the skeletons of the battle from First Bull Run. The Texas Brigade was not in First Bull Run because there was a train wreck. They were on trains going to the battle, but there was a train wreck, so they missed the battle. Well, a little more than, a little less than a year later, they're almost at the same ground that the battle was fought on, First Manassas. And it was fought on August 29th and August 30th, 1862. Following the Confederate victory at Gaines Mill, McClellan's forces moved down the peninsula towards the James River with the intention of turning around and attacking Richmond. But after engagements at Savage's Station, Frazier's Farm, and Malvern Hill, McClellan and the Army of the Potomac moved to Harrison's Landing on the James River to rest and refit under the protection of the Union gunboats ending what was known as the Seven Days Battles. The Battle at Gaines Mill had taken a heavy toll on the Texas Brigade, so they were ordered back to their old camp along the Mechanicsville Road just outside of Richmond, Camp Pine Island, where they would spend the next month also resting and refitting. During the brigade's stay in Richmond, Lieutenant Colonel Walter Botts of the 5th Texas, who'd been wounded at Seven Pines, resigned and returned to Houston to ultimately found what is now one of the most prestigious law firms in Texas, Baker Botts. Robert Campbell wrote that the men were not fond of Botts and no tears were shed for he was neither honored nor loved. Major John C. Upton was promoted and took Botts' place. On August the 13th, 1862, Hood, who was now commanding Whiting's division, received orders to join General Longstreet in Gordonsville. Robert E. Lee wanted to strike one part of the Union Army, John Pope, and George McClellan, their forces were split. McClellan was still on the peninsula, trying to boast that he could take Richmond. And John Pope's kind of defending Washington, D.C. And Pope, and McClendon made some foolish boasts, like John Pope says, I can defeat any rebels that come against me. Well, that was not true. And Second Manassas really proved that. About a week and a half before Second Manassas, uh, there was a skirmish of Freeman's Ford, which was not far away. And so that was just a little preclude to the Battle of Second Manassas. After the skirmish at Freeman's Ford on August the 22nd, Longstreet's Corps began its march towards Manassas, following Stonewall Jackson through the thoroughfare gap with the Texas Brigade in the lead. After an arduous march, on August the 28th, the Texans were ordered to secure thoroughfare gap using a cattle trail to the north of the gap, and the Federal artillery that was guarding the gap retired. Long before the gray dawn of the coming day was visible along the eastern horizon, the deep thunder of artillery was heard in the distance. The shrill bugles sang reveille, and by daylight, August 29, 1862, Longstreet's Corps was again in motion. Private Val Giles, Company B, 4th Texas Infantry. Hood's Texas Brigade was part of the battle on August 29th. Uh, there was some severe fighting. A lot of young men from the 1st Texas were killed. 
uh, Private D.M. Walker from Navarro County, East Texas, was one of the casualties. He was only 16 years old. He was getting discharged because he was a young man and he was too young to fight in the battle. Well, he persuaded some officers that he just wanted to fight one more battle so he could be with his friends. Well, unfortunately, Private Walker was shot and killed on August 29th, 1862. It, a lot of the fighting was in the woods. Um, Colonel Philip Work was severely wounded and almost was captured in the woods at Sega Manassas on August 29th. He's very lucky he wasn't captured by Union forces, but he escaped just in time because uh, he was right next to him and it was very thick woods and they couldn't see very far in front of them or behind him. A day later, his Texas Brigade made, to me, their best charge of the Civil War. Um, during the late afternoon on August 30th, 1862, you had Hampton's Legion, South Carolina Legion, the 18th Georgia, the 1st, 4th, and 5th Texas, and they're all lined up in battle. Well, the 5th Texas, they were right in front of the 4th, excuse me, the 5th and 10th New York Zoev's uh, um, Dairy Ace regiments. And these were the same soldiers that a little more than a year before were taunting the Texas soldiers at uh, the Potomac. Because the river was kind of narrow at some points. And so some of the soldiers from Guerrier's regiment said, we heard you Texas are pretty tough. We're going to show you you're not. And the Texas just smiled and said, okay, well, you'll see. Well, Gaines Mill, the, the uh, Texans were up against the 5th, and 10th New York and got them really good. Well, a couple months later at Seg Manassas, they faced them again. But this time it was a devastating charge against the Zoavs that they'll never forget. It was decimation on a grand scale. The 5th Texas was right in the woods, about 100 yards away from soldiers of the 10th New York. You had the 10th New York and then you had the 5th New York right behind them. And they were thinking that there was going to be any kind of charge. And all of a sudden, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they heard thousands of soldiers from Texas making the rebel yell and then charging, bayonet charge, right at the 10th New York. And they were shocked. The Zoas did not think there was anybody close to them. So the 5th Texas went up against the 10th New York and just ran right through them. However, the Texans did not go unscathed. The commanding officer of the 5th Texas, Colonel John C. Upton, was killed at the very beginning of the charge. He was on a horse. He took the 5th Texas flag, and right at the beginning, when they made their charge, a grape shot shot him in the head and killed him right away. And that's very unfortunate. John C. Upton was quite a man. He was quite a character. He was very boisterous. He was brave. He was tenacious and had a quick temper. At the Battle of Gaines Mill, right before Sega Manassas, a squad of Union soldiers would surrendered, and a soldier of the, of the 5th Texas said, Sir, what should we do with these soldiers? He goes, release them. I'd rather fight them than feed them. And so they were released. Also, on August 30th, right before the charge in the woods, a staff officer from James Longstreet goes up to Colonel Upton and says, do you need any guidance in battle, sir? Uh, are you all ready? And Colonel Upton did not like that question. He goes, our soldiers are ready. How dare you ask that question? Get out of here. Well, not long after, Colonel Upton was, was killed. And that was unfortunate for the 5th Texas. He was quite a man. But to the charge, the 5th Texas goes up against the 10th New York, goes right through him, and the 10th New York is running through the 5th New York's camp. And they're saying, run away, run away, we're getting massacred, we're getting charged upon. Well, the soldiers of the 5th New York, those that were ready to go up against the Texans, lined up in line and fired a volley at the 5th Texas. Well, the 5th New York were so panicked, they didn't realize that they were kind of in a ditch. They were kind of in a low place. And so when they fired their rifles, they fired too high. Well, the 5th New York, the 5th Texas did not fire too high. They hit their mark and devastated 
the 5th New York Zoas. I mean, devastated them. Within 20 minutes, hundreds of Zoas were lying dead or wounded on the field. A soldier from Texas looked at their bright uniforms because the Zoab uniform is very, very colorful. It has big, bright pantaloons or pants. They have a little fancy little jacket with embroidery and everything. Well, some of the soldiers from the 5th New York are going away from a stream or they're, going, they're crossing a stream and retreating and their pantaloons are filled with water, which is kind of a comical sight. Color Sergeant George A. Bernard of the 1st Texas almost lost his flag. He almost dropped it because he was laughing so hard looking at these soldiers from the 5th New York trying to cross the stream and onto land with, with pants full of water. You know, it's, it's quite a comical sight, he said. What's sad is, is they found a little drummer boy after the charge and they didn't know who he belonged to. He was a little mascot of the, of the 5th New York. One other story about Manassas, Second Manassas, is the story of Lieutenant Mark Kearns, who ran a federal battery. And he was at his guns when everybody else in his battery was shot or ran away. He was the only one that stayed by the guns. And the 4th Texas got the battery. And the soldiers were very impressed by his brave conduct. And he's lying down next to the guns. And they said, let us take you to the hospital. You're in bad shape. And he goes, no, leave me. I told my soldiers and myself, I'm not going to leave my guns. Well, Lieutenant Colonel Benjamin F. Carter, who led a company against the Kearns battery, was so impressed with the young man that when he died, his, Lieutenant Colonel Carter's overcoat was over the body of Lieutenant Kearns. Less than a year later at Gettysburg, Lieutenant Colonel Carter is mortally wounded at the base of Little Round Top and he's captured on a wagon, ambulance wagon going back to Virginia. And he's at some house and the mother of Lieutenant Kearns heard about the loss of Colonel Carter, heard that he was wounded. So she went up with a friend of hers to the hospital and took care of Lieutenant Colonel Carter because she said Colonel Carter acted kindly on, on her son's last moments. So that was just a connection between Manassas and Gettysburg. The second Manassas, if Robert E. Lee would have had more troops, the, gate, the gates to Washington, D.C. was wide open. If they had enough men, they could have taken Washington, D.C., in my opinion. Two weeks after the second Manassas, you had the Battle of Antietam or Sharpsburg the bloodiest day of the Civil War. 